Hi guys, this is Anna and welcome to my channel. This is going to be finally my long, long awaited April wrap up. This is part one, there will be two parts because April has been a pretty decent month for me in terms of reading. I've actually have managed to read, including all the literary magazines, about 14 different items. I have recorded two separate reviews about the two books I have read in April, which I will link down below and I will just quickly wrap them up here as well. I don't know when I'm going to finally record the final half. Hopefully this week. I'm on a half term. I have lots of stuff to do around the house. But I do have slightly more time. So I think I will be recording lots and lots of videos. I still owe you the second half of my purchases from April. And today is the 1st of June. So I have to record everything I have read in May. It's just lots of videos. Probably will be recorded in the next two, three days. So... I'll give you some, some content to watch. So the first book I have literally read on the first day, I finished it on the 1st of April, was Cancellation Prize, which is book number nine in the Forbidden Men series. And I have given this one two out of five stars. I really, really did not like it. I think this is the end of the road for me as far as any romantic books go, because I just, I don't have any patience for them anymore. They're just a little bit absurdic. The plot was, neither here nor there it was just so predictable it's a bit of a waste of time i wanted something really really easy because i was reading little life in parallel so i just wanted something to completely shut my mind but the book actually made me angry because i was sitting there thinking why am i wasting my time reading it it's two out of five not one out of five because i wanted to see how some of the characters from the previous eight books in the series progressed so i got to see a little bit of their life and that probably was the best part of it because the actual romantic lead in that particular story was really really bad which brings me to the little life that was the second book i have finished in april i have recorded a separate video on this book which i will link down below as i mentioned and i gave this three out of five stars the book has angered me in some aspects i don't really like it i don't really hate it but i don't really like it it's big unnecessarily I'm not gonna talk more about it in this video if you want to see exactly how I felt about it watch my review I'm not even sure I will keep it because it is a bit of a chunker and I highly doubt I will ever come back to that and then we're kind of moving towards quite a lot of non-fiction so I'm gonna start with the one I've shown you in my April purchases and this is about the Mount Saint Michel. I purchased this in France and I have read it straight away through my holidays. I have given this three out of five stars because the photography is really, really, really good. But the story is pretty minimal and the biggest disappointment for me was the translation. This is in English, but it's a really poor translation from French. It's just some of the paragraphs were painful. Another book which I have shown you before on this channel, this is non-fiction, and this is Terms and Condition by Yesenda Maxton Graham, published by beautiful, slightly foxed edition, cloth bound editions. It has taken me a while to read this book because I really enjoyed it and I did not want to finish it. I was kind of procrastinating reading it. I would sort of treat myself to maybe chapter week. It's 4 out of 5, not 5 out of 5, because a lot of it was a little bit of a repetition. Uh, there are some chapters which were just brilliant, and some of the chapters which were slightly boring, in, in, in my opinion. But the topic is really dear to me. I have gone to boarding school to do my sixth form in England. So it was really interesting to see how the school system functioned prior to my time, so the 1940s, 50s, 60s and 70s. Highly would highly recommend this book if you're interested in English culture, in the way the society is structured, in the way the educational system works, particularly girls education. It's really, really, really good. The only problem with that, because it's slightly focused, it has a limited publishing. So I think they only published about 2000 of those books and they're now on the second round of printing because it's been such a huge success. Another book which I have finished and I have recorded a separate video was Balthazar, which part two of Alexandra Quartet by Lawrence Durrell. I absolutely loved that book. I give it five out of five stars and I would link the video down below for you to watch if you'd like to see exactly why I loved it that much. 
as for the other two books I'd like to talk to you about today, I don't have them as a physical copy. I read them electronically and I'm quite grateful for the fact that I had them electronically. I did not waste money purchasing them because both books were a little bit of a letdown, particularly due to the fact that they're really, really hyped at the moment. So everyone is reading those books. I'm talking about the Homo Sapiens, The Brief History of Mankind by, I can never pronounce him. Yival no Hirari, and then the second book he published this year, sort of a sequel to that, called Homo Deus. So I'm gonna start with Homo Sapiens. I've read it really, really quickly. I ended up giving it three out of five stars, and I was kind of torn between giving it three or two. I don't understand why a lot of people go around saying that the book is just amazing and it changed the way they look at the world. I don't know, I don't want to sound arrogant, but I have not learned a single thing from reading this book. I found it very naive and obvious. It's like, he's just saying stuff which everyone should know, it's obvious. I, oh, honestly, I'm not making it up, guys, but there was not a single anecdote, a single bit of info he has used in this book I have not heard before or read before. And it was a massive letdown. I really like the language. I think if I was 14, 15, and I came across that book, that would have blown my mind, that would have made me like say, wow, it's a really, really concise, holistic view of the world and the history of humankind. But coming into this time of my life, I'm in my 30s, I just found it so boring. I've read it in about two days, I think, two, three days. I just, just, like, I didn't glance, actually, I did read through it. But... A lot of it. I like, asked my husband to have a look at some of the economics he was talking about and my husband works in capital markets so he's much more of an expert than I am in that field and he had a bit of a chuckle so it's not just my opinion. My husband has a very similar opinion about the book. I just don't understand. Like, you know, If you came to me and said this is a really nice book about history of humankind for GCC kids I would have said like yeah brilliant. I'm all for it and I would have championed it. But the fact that so many booktubers said that blew their mind and they found it scary and it made them reconsider the way they live their lives, that's the thing which frightened me because if for an adult reader that book has something new to say, that it's not a really good reflection of our society. Which brings me to the second book, Homo Deo, sort of he's looking into the possibility of the future for the humankind, where a humankind will be the predominant species and he's going to, you know, might have to go in into intelligence and look into AI. And again, there was nothing in that book which was new to me. And I ended up giving Homodeus two out of five stars, even less. Main reason for that is just chunks of it were repeat word for word from Homo sapiens. It's like, why? You already written one book. Yeah, it brought you success. Stop milking the same cow. It's like, you know, when you have a movie and you end up doing franchise, like, I don't watch the franchise movies, like, for example, the Pirates of the Caribbean. It's like the fifth installment now. The first one wasn't that great. Why bother making consecutive? Or the Fast and the Furious? It's like seven or eight. How many of them are now? Endless. It's the same thing. So he had a success, a commercial success of Homo Sapiens. Fair enough. Stop there. Or come up with something which would be different and new. Homo Deus is a big book, and about a third of it is literally a repeat from Homo Sapiens. Why? Like, seriously. People who will pick up that book will probably read the first one. And my attention span is is okay. Like, I don't suffer with dementia. I don't need you to repeat the same material. Just for fun, I took the two books and some of the things which really struck me, and I opened the two of them next to each other. One on my iPad, one on my computer, on my Kindle, and I looked at that, and he literally copy pasted bits and bobs. That is just sloppy. <sighs> that did enrage me. It was nothing like if you bother to read, I don't know, BBC Science News Daily. If you just read the homepage of Science Friday or New Scientist, like I'm not asking you to read Nature Science. Like I'm not going there. Just like the basic stuff. Just read the basic. Pretty much like once a week. Once a week will be enough. There will be nothing in that book which will strike you as new. A lot of the stuff he's talking about is about six years old. So it's not really news. It's 
again, <sighs> when I used to work in science, like a postdoc, my husband would come home and he would like, oh yeah, I was, li I was listening to BBC and they said this, and like a really exciting piece of news, and I go like, yeah, that's been in conferences and published in scientific papers about three, four years ago, there's nothing new about it, I'm sorry. So that's the difference, right? And this is even more basic. It's like, it's just so basic that I don't know who his target audience. His target audience, people who, I don't know, work in the arts and humanities, and they have not bothered to read anything about science. I don't know. The hype for me is, is completely unnecessary. I, I don't understand. I don't understand why Obama, why Obama endorsed that book. That was the one book he recommended last year as a summary. Seriously. Maybe for his daughters, that would have been a good thing. For anyone over the age of 20, it's probably going to be controversial. If you have read those books, and I have just accidentally insulted you, I'm really, really sorry, but this is my honest feeling. Out of curiosity, I've made one of my good friends read it and she has exactly the same opinion as me and she is not working in science she's a lawyer so it's a little bit of a basically if you if you do something where you're active in the current job you would know stuff in the book ah <sighs> right so that's part one of the books i have read in april let me know down below if you have read any of them if uh, you liked Homo uh, the brief history of humankind, Homo sapiens or Homo deus. I would like to know what you think and why you like them because maybe I'm just missing something really important. It might be. I just, I would be curious. I would be curious to know what you think about those guys. See you in the next video. Bye.